Today on Engine Power, we're getting down and dirty with the build of a class legal small block for the hometown heroes of the dirt track. It's a nice little block. Absolutely. It's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Engine power's back and ready to bury the hatchet in another high performance project. This time with a style of racing that dates back to Prohibition era moonshining. Now it's gained popularity and tons of support since then by becoming an American pastime. And big names like Ford Racing and Chevy Performance cater to it by having specific power plants to get the job done. We're going circle track racing on dirt. Dirt tracks are the starting point to many professional racers' careers, from mini stocks to sportsmen and all the way up to the big powered, wicked looking late models. It's an affordable form of auto racing, whether you're going as a spectator or a competitor. To show our support, hang out and learn how a purpose-built circle track engine comes to life and goes racing. And the class we're doing this for has rules to keep the cost down. We have to use a cast iron block and cast iron cylinder head, which must maintain the stock valve angle, which in this case is 23 degree. There's no porting or polishing that's allowed, and a wet sump oiling system is mandatory. And the big kicker, it must run a tech-approved Holley 4412 two-barrel carburetor. The class is two-barrel late model. Greg Love started out in mini stocks and worked his way up to the late model Holy class. Boy. Now these cars are way bigger than you think. Due to the width of the car going in the trailer, the trailer is as wide as legally to be on the road. You have to use an extended steering shaft that connects on in the driver's compartment to run back. So when you unload the car, you steer it. He's an aggressive driver and is always at the front of the field. Up until now, the car was powered by a 358 cubic inch small block that he assembled. The car sports fresh panels Greg hung himself using pieces from AR Bodies in Greenbrier, Tennessee. Now the whole package rolls on grooved Hoosier 1600 spec tires out back that are on 15 by 14 weld wheels. Now bead locks are on the right side due to the G-force when entering the corner. Underneath is a GRT chassis supported by AFCO shocks. Clinging to them is a Winters Quick Change rear end. Transferring the power to the rear is a BERT two-speed transmission with an internal clutch. With an engine over 362 cubic inches, the car has to weigh 2,400 pounds after the race with the driver in the seat. Okay, it may look like I hung the body on this car and I was blindfolded while I did it, but it's intentionally canted for good reason. When this car is pitched into the corner, the soft spring rate on the right front allows the tire to bite into the track so the car will steer, and it causes this front end to dip very low, sometimes even touching the track. So the offset is needed. We're building this engine for a harsh environment. Lots of dirt, a narrow high RPM power band, plus the concerns for cooling due to the track surface getting stuck in the front of the radiator means we need proven parts. That's why we chose this Dart SHP small block as the foundation of this build. Now it's designed for high performance use in all types of motorsports. It has extra thick decks for improved head gasket sealing, blind head bolt holes, and provisions for factory roller valve train. On the bottom side, 350 main journals accept commonly available cranks and splayed four bolt mains ensure a strong bottom end. Plus a priority main oiling system directs oil to the main bearings first. This block came to us unfinished, so we shipped it off to the School of Automotive Machinists where Chris Bennett and two of his best students cut the decks and squared them up to nine inches, checked the align hone and cam tunnel for accuracy, and finalized the board of 4165 using a torque plate. Last but not least, they enlarged the lifter bores to 875 thousandths. Here's the formula for our version of a competitive two barrel race engine. 4165 bore by 3750 stroke, 409 cubic inches. It'll have 14.3 to 14.5 compression, so that means race gas. The target bob weight under 1700. And the reason is, the engine is an indirect part of the car's braking system in a circle track car, so the lower the mass, the easier it is to slow down. RPM range, 5,000 to 7,500 with an 8,000 RPM ceiling. And last but not least, predicted horsepower. Since we're restricted by a two barrel carburetor, we're gonna predict 
470 to 500 HP. To get started, we need clean parts free of any machining debris or rust preventative. So we'll remove the valve spring assemblies, seals, and valves from the cylinder heads, and the main caps from the block so our safety clean washer can do the job it does so well. The build starts in just a few. Next, learn how races are won by a thousandth of an inch at a time. Our Dirt Devil Circle Track engine build continues with a clean set of cylinder heads and block. Now the block requires a specific finishing kit with special cam bearings and freeze plugs. The cam bearing has an annulus, which is a fancy term for groove, on the outside of the bearing because there's not one in the block to get oil to the cam journals. Installing these is the first step of our assembly. Here's a quick tip. Always install the cam bearings first because a small amount of bearing material can be scraped off into the oil gallery during installation. Having all the gallery plugs removed allows air to be blown into the passages and force material out so it doesn't contaminate the oil and ruin bearings. Next, the heavy duty freeze plugs can be dressed with Loctite 609 retaining compound and attention to detail starts here. Line them up and knock them in easy. Like any engine build you'll see here, precise measuring is done throughout the entire build. Now before the crank goes in, we have to check for proper bearing clearance. Now what we're looking for is one thousandths inch of clearance per inch of journal diameter. So the upper Clevite H-series coated bearings can be placed in the saddles and the lowers in the caps. Now they're installed and the center bolts are torqued to 65 foot-pounds, the outers to 35. Proper torque is required even when checking to ensure proper bearing crush. We'll use our new Goodson inspection stand, which has Delrin resting pads to hold our crankshaft during measuring. An outside two to three inch micrometer is the tool for the job. We'll measure each journal and record it on our engine build sheet, which is also available to you on the Power Nation website. The correct way to measure a journal is in two spots. Take your first measurement, then take another one 90 degrees from the first one. The difference is how much the journal is out of round. This one is within one ten thousandths, which shows the accuracy of Eagle's grinding. When building a tight tolerance racing engine, these precise measurements are critical for maximizing engine performance and longevity. With the dial bore gauge set, we'll measure the bearings inner diameter. Number one is 2.7513. Subtract the journal diameter of the crank, and that's our clearance. This one has 28 ten thousandths. I'll measure the rest, recording them on our sheet as well. Our clearances for these range from 28 to 31 ten thousandths. So the green light is on to drop the crank in. Which means we need to install one half of the rear main seal and lube the bearings. This engine's not going to sit around. It's going from the stand to the dyno where we will prime it. So Joe Gibbs BR30 oil will be our choice of lube. Using care and caution, gently lower the crank into the block. Now here's a tip. Do not spin it at this time because the bearings are not round until the cap is torqued. Now the caps can be positioned and tapped with a dead blow to seat it in the register and snugged up. Using a large dead blow, smack the front of the crank to the rear and the rear to the front. This squares up the thrust bearing before it's torqued. The same values apply with the crank installed. 65 on the inners, 35 on the outers. Using oil was an advantage in this case. It lets the crank spin easier than with assembly lube so you feel how free it turns over. There should be absolutely no bind. Thrust is a go as well at seven thousandths. Now the oil gallery plugs can go in. We'll use high pressure lube on them to avoid galling. No sealant here since they're inside the timing cover. Moving forward takes us to the Eagle rods and Molly pistons. Now the rods are their forged H-beam lightweight design that have a six inch center to center length. Now the small end accepts a 927 thousandths wrist pin and the big end shares the same bearing diameter as a small block 283 Chevy, which is two inches. Holding the cap on are ARP 2000 rod bolts. The pistons are Molly's forged flat top design with negative 5cc valve reliefs. 
They have a one millimeter, one millimeter, two millimeter ring land for reduced friction and an anti-wear coating to protect the piston during cold starts. Now something we like about them, instead of spiral locks, they use wire locks to install the wrist pin for an easier installation. Assembly is easy. A little bit of oil in the bushing. Make sure the orientation of the rod and the piston are correct and slide the wrist pin between the two. And here's the easiest way to install these wire locks. We have seven more to go, so while you take a break, we'll file fit the rings. From Bear Block to Dino Ready, coming up next. Glad you're back with us for the assembly of our dirt late model engine. We gapped the top ring to 21 thousandths and the second to 25 thousandths. That's due to the heat and abuse this engine will see under the extreme conditions of circle track dirt racing. Now the assemblies are ready to drop in the bores. With oil for lube on the rings and skirts, the assembly will go into this tapered ring compressor. It's placed on the deck and a piston knocker is used to drive it home, making sure not to nick the journal down low. Once seated, the cap is installed and the rod bolts are snugged up for now. And with the rest in, we can torque the rod bolts to 43 foot-pounds using ARP Ultra Torque Lube. Since this is a purpose-built racing engine, it requires a camshaft with specific specs and features that aren't found in street grinds like this. One of those features is how small the cam's base circle is compared to the street grind. Now this one is 900 thousandths and we need that extra clearance so the cam's lobes will clear the rod due to the larger stroke. We had a custom cam ground specifically for our two barrel application. Now it's a Comp Cam's TK series solid roller which has the most aggressive lobe design for a standard rocker arm ratio. Duration at 50 thousandths on the intake is 251 degrees, the exhaust is 255. Lift at the valve with a 1-5 ratio rocker is 645 on the intake, 645 on the exhaust. Lobe separation angle is 107. Comp's ultimate adjustable timing set will make the big link. On the back is a Torrington bearing which reduces friction. Now this setup is adjustable 6 degrees advance or retard in 2 degree increments. A comp roller cam button will also go in and gets retained with the cam bolts. We're going to install it at 102 and a half degrees, which is four and a half degrees advanced since the lobe separation was 107. Now that will be the closest the intake valve will be to the piston when we check clearance in a bit. The timing cover is a unique three piece design from Comp Cams. It starts with the block spacer. The front cover can go on now without sealant using supplied fasteners. Checking the cams end plate is simple. Place a dial indicator mounted to a magnetic base on the block and line up the pointer with the timing gear inside the hole. Using a screwdriver, push the cam to the rear of the block. Zero out the indicator and move the cam to the front. We have 36 thousandths and the recommended end play is one to five thousandths. So supplied shims need to be placed between the button and the cam. With everything back together, our clearance is in the range at three thousandths. Rolling the engine over on our modified stand will allow us to drop in our ARP oil pump drive shaft and install this Moroso modified high volume oil pump. We ordered it with the matching pickup for our pan already welded to it. A circle track seven quart kicked out sump oil pan from Moroso will seal up the bottom end. Now inside it features a louvered windage tray and trap doors in the sump to help control slosh in the corners. It rests on their one piece oil pan gasket. As the ARP fasteners are cinched down, compression stops keep the gasket from being forced out of the rails. The class rules require iron cylinder heads and no porting or polishing is allowed. Now we needed a head that would flow in excess of 300 CFM to make good power with this engine. And these Dart Iron Eagle 230 cc heads do just that right out of the box. Now these have the small 49 cc combustion chamber that houses a 2080 intake and a 1600 exhaust valve. Now these do flow 309 CFM at 700 inch lift. Endurex solid rollers drop in and the heads are laid on and torqued to 70 foot pounds. Now some primer and white paint which lets us see any leaks or problems at the track. 8053 push pushrods are next. 
followed by these Crower stainless steel shaft rockers designed for the Iron Eagle 230 heads. The rocker bar goes on first and is torqued to 65 foot-pounds. This design uses a 5 8 inch shaft for durability and stability. Now the intake rocker has a 1 6 ratio while the exhaust sports a 1.5. They were also upgraded to roller bearing tips for reduced friction and less heat. An Edelbrock Super Victor intake manifold will seal the valley. Everything else gets assembled in the dyno and that's next. The Dirt Devil Gets Evil. We're back and right where we said we'd be, in the dino cell. And from the sound of it, this ain't no white elephant. Feeding our 409 cubic inch Dirt Devil is a race prepped, track proven 4412 two barrel sitting on a Canton adapter that we got from Summit Racing. These crazy looking headers that fit Greg's late model are bay is tri-wise that step from one and three quarter to one and seven eighths, then merge into a three inch collector. With 31 degrees of timing, the session begins. Get a couple more degrees in her. Greg Love couldn't stay away. Let's see what it'll do. Here we go. Let her eat. After all, this engine is going in his race car. To start, a sweep from four to six thousand. Ooh. 445, 471 on torque, 31 degrees of timing at 6,000. That's encouraging right there. Two That's barrel, baby. Really good numbers for a little carb. Greg brought one of his trick pieces he thinks will help out. Due to the temperature of the air and humidity in the room, we're gonna add the air cleaner onto it to see if we can get better numbers out of it. Since the carburetor has a choke horn, the air cleaner base fits around, it seals, helps the air flow into the engine, makes more torque, more horsepower too. Obviously, this is the one he runs on the car. It's also getting two more degrees. Total is 33. I like it with the air cleaner on it because it's... It covers up that dirty carburetor. It covers up that dirty carburetor. <laughs> We're also taking it to 7,000 RPM. Yeah, buddy. Nice, man. 463, 488 foot-pounds. Look at that torque. What's all that mean on the dirt? 40. That's fast. It'll get you off the corner. That's what we're looking for. The power keeps increasing with the timing changes, so we'll put another two degrees in it for a total of 35 and see what we get. We're running the fuel Greg races with, so it will be a good test to see what the engine likes. Wow, 475 horsepower at 6,000, 490 pound-feet at 4,000. This thing's kind of evil. I like it. Perfect combination. Greg can also run a four barrel class with this dirt rocket. So we'll throw on our quick fuel Black Diamond 950 to see how much difference the additional airflow will make. Although designed around a two barrel carb for induction, screwing a four barrel to this combination cranked up the HP to 556 at 6600 and 534 pounds of torque at 4700 for a gain of 81 horsepower and 46 foot-pounds of torque. And that's without optimizing the tune. No time to celebrate our horsepower victory, though. We have to get this bullet set back inside the frame rails of Greg's car so he can put it to good use out on the track. Now, it's a snap to do with how open the front of the car is. Greg is an old pro at doing the rest, so next time you see him, He'll be making laps on the dirt track and hopefully running up front with our Dirt Devil Mill under the hood. And we're taking you with us. See you then.